Hi, this is Joel Persinger. Thank you very much for watching my channel and my videos. I deeply, deeply appreciate it. Today I'm going to look at something that was sent to me from Optics Planet, and that is a pair of Crimson Trace laser grips for my always gun, my uh, little snubby Taurus Model 85. That's a gun I carry with me most of the time. And they were kind enough to send me some rubberized laser grips for it, so we'll get that thing out. And these are the grips right here. By the way, gun is unloaded, so I think we're good where that's concerned. Now, the interesting thing about these grips is I, I've been kind of hesitant to get them, and I really haven't found a need for them until I've gotten older and my eyes have started to degrade. And now that I'm a little bit older, I've been thinking about, you know, maybe I'll put a laser on the gun. And I've looked at different companies and different types and different things. And uh, one of the things I discovered is I didn't, this has to be an instinctive thing. When I draw the gun, I don't want to have to figure out how to turn the laser on or cycle through two or three different modes. If it flashes and it does this and it does that, I just want the dot to be on the bad guy so I can fight my way free. That's all I'm interested in. And I'm not carrying the gun professionally. I'm not a police officer. I'm not a, you know, I don't carry a gun for a living anymore. Now I'm just carrying it just for me to defend myself and you know it's part and parcel of doing what I do on a daily basis for work and that is just traveling around and meeting with people and and going to the range and that kind of stuff so for me as an as a citizen I really don't didn't think I needed a laser particularly uh, that had any fancy functionality but in any case Optics Planet was kind enough to send me these rubber uh, crimson trace laser grips and when I got them I put them on there I fiddled with the laser and I thought well that's nice but I really don't need it until I went to the range. And then I discovered my shooting improved and I started looking at the sights going, okay, the sights are small and I realized that, but I thought I had them aligned properly, but I'm shooting a little to the right or I'm shooting a little to the left. But with the laser, I'm hitting where I want to hit. And then I put on my reading glasses and realized I wasn't seeing the sights very crisply at all. In fact, they were just, you know, I've said many times at this point at my age, I just kind of line up the three blurs, the back sight, the front sight, and the target. And when I put on my reading glasses and looked at the sights and lined them up properly, the red dot, as I had set it up, was sitting right on top of the front sight. And so the dot was in the right position. It was me that was not lining the sights up quite right because I couldn't see them properly. So here's a few things I like about the grips and a couple things I was concerned about. One is I really like the fact that the grips are these particular ones. Now, I, I don't know if they make different models. I can just share with you that these particular ones are rubberized. So they have a really good solid grip, and I like the grip on them. I also like the fact that it gives me that little bit of extra grip on my pinky. Uh, you can see that the grips are different sizes. The original grip was a little shorter, and as a result, there was no room, no place for me to put my pinky. But the longer laser grip gives me a place to put my pinky, so I get a more positive grip on the gun. Now, here's the potential problem with that. If I take this gun I, with the longer grip, I was concerned that when I put it in my, my uh, pocket holster and put it in my pocket, that the grip was going to stick out of the pocket or that I wasn't going to be able to get a hold of it or that it was going to cause me some sort of problems with my, my pocket holster. And I live in Southern California, in San Diego, California, where it gets warm and it's sunny and, sunny and I'm wearing shorts and cargo shorts and whatever. And so I'm carrying this gun in a pocket holster a lot. And if I found that I had to constantly change my grips all the time, in order to carry it with the laser or carry it with the, in the pocket holster or whatever, that was going to be a pain in the rump. And I just, I knew that I wasn't going to do it. I was going to put the original grips back on and leave it at that, way, that way. So I decided one day to go ahead and put it in the pocket holster, stick it in my pocket and carry it all day. And I carried it for about three days that way. I found that the extra little uh, length, one, didn't cause me any problem putting the gun in my pocket holster and carrying it that way. And two, it, it actually gave me a more positive grip when I wanted to draw the gun. So I've found it to be very positive. Now, I'm a pretty big guy. So if you're a smaller person with smaller pockets, you may discover that that doesn't work for you. It works pretty good for me. The other thing I liked about them and I like about them that I hadn't been able to do before was with the original grips that came with this Taurus Model 85, they were kind, they're kind of puffy. And they're, they're really awesome grips because they absorb recoil really well. But they're a little puffier than these are right around this area right here where you would use a speed loader. And so I grabbed a speed loader here with some uh, dummy rounds in it. And what I discovered early on is that it just didn't make sense to use a speed loader with this gun because the grips that came with the gun puffed out so much that the speed loader would get hung up and not want to come out of the gun once the, once the rounds had dropped or not want to drop the rounds. Well, this grip is designed a little differently, so now with this one, I mean, it's a simple matter of dropping the rounds in and go. So now, finally, 
I can actually use a speed loader with this gun. I've been carrying speed strips with it, which are fine, but you gotta admit they're a little slower. Speed loader for a reload is quite a bit faster, so I've started carrying around a little speed loader in a speed loader pouch. And that is uh, really terrific as far as I'm concerned. So that's been a that's been a plus for me where these grips are concerned because it's allowed me to do something uh, I could not do before, and that is load my gun a little quicker. Now a couple other pluses with them as opposed to other laser solutions. Grip is a little bigger, as I said, so it gives me a little bit more um, control of the gun. You know, little snubbies can be snappy. Uh, this one less so because it's all steel, but still it can be a little snappy with plus P's. And I find it's a lot more comfortable to shoot with plus P's with, this, with the longer and the bigger grip. Two, when I draw the gun, my finger automatically hits the switch and the laser goes on. So I don't have to think about reaching over with my thumb or touching something or whatever to turn the laser on. It just comes on when I draw the gun. Another thing I discovered with the laser that I've really been enjoying is I like to dry practice. And one of the reasons I like to dry practice is it's free and it's really great practice for trigger press, side alignment, reloading the pistol with dummy rounds and those kind of things. And with the laser, it gives me a real quick indication if my trigger press is off, if I'm jerking the trigger or whatever, because I can see the laser move. Now there's other ways to do it and I've been doing it that way for years. I've been watching the sights to see if they move and lots of little tricks where that's concerned. But the laser gives me that one more little piece that's pretty solid. All right, lastly, unless I think of another one, <laughs> which I might. I mean, I didn't make a list. I'm just telling you off the top of my head the things that I, I have been impressed by. Um, the other thing that I, I, I did like, I do like about it, is the concept of point shooting as opposed to flash sight picture. Because point shooting is a different thing than flash sight picture. Flash, flash sight picture, you're looking for the front sight anywhere inside the back sight if it's close quarters and then press the trigger and you're gonna hit the bad guy who's trying to hurt you. That's flash sight picture. It works brilliantly and it's awesome and I use it a lot. Point shooting on the other hand is for even closer uh, confrontations than that, where you really don't have the time and you're going to focus not on the front sight but on the target, on the bad guy. And you're just going to point the gun like you would your, your finger and press the trigger and you're going to hit him. It just takes some practice. And point shooting can be done extended fully out in front of you. It can be done at, in this position. If you're down here and you've got to raise your hand to defend yourself, this is all point shooting and it's done at very close quarters. But in every case, you're focused on the threat, not on the sights. Well, the truth is, when somebody's in front of you and they got a big knife or a club or they're bigger, you know, they're huge, they look like they're going to hurt you or kill you, what do we naturally focus on? The danger. We don't naturally focus on the front sight. We have to train ourselves to do that. That's the difference between the way we're hardwired and the software we might want to replace that hardwired hardware with. And, you know, when, if you don't practice a lot or when push comes to shove, even if you do, a lot of times we're focused on the threat itself and with a laser, you put the laser on the dot and it's point shooting. You're focusing on the threat, not the front sight. At a certain distance, you really want to focus on the front sight. So it's, it's all a matter of range and I'll talk more about that and demonstrate that in another video. But that is one thing I do like about it is it allows me to focus on the target at close quarters. I also like the fact that with a little gun like this at night, I now have a sighting system that allows me to very efficiently and very effectively light up the target at night. If I happen to be, God forbid, in a public place, a movie theater or something like that where somebody's shooting up the place, it's dark and I cannot see the sights. I can barely make out the person who's doing all the damage. I have to be able to get that sight on target on that person and I gotta make sure I don't accidentally, inadvertently hit some poor innocent person who's running around the room. Those things can be very chaotic. Anything that helps me make sure my sights are lined up properly when I press that trigger is vital to me because I'm responsible for that round from the moment it lives, leaves the muzzle till the moment it stops and any damage it does along the way. So I find that those, that's really positive about them all as well and I, I really like the laser for that reason. Now I've discovered that personally I prefer the laser grips over other solutions for this particular gun mainly because this is a close quarters panic pistol in your face, I got to do something right now, and I want it to just turn the laser on instinctively. Now here's the one thing I found of all of them that I, I find that I don't like, and that is the position of the laser is such that I've trained for years to have a straight finger along the frame, and you can see there's the laser and my finger is covering it up. 
If I have my, my straight finger along the intersection between the cylinder and the frame, which is where I've been trained and where I've trained to put it, now I've covered up the laser and my dot's not on the bad guy. So when I move my finger, now my dot's on the bad guy, but here it isn't. And that's the one thing I'm going to have to relearn with this pistol to get my finger down here, which I don't prefer. And as an instructor, I don't prefer it because when I see students this way, it's very hard when I've got a line full of students on a, on a line uh, to make sure that everybody's got their finger off the trigger. If it's up here, I can see through the trigger, the trigger guard and I can tell. The other thing is that if we get our fingers down here, they tend to get lazy. And sometimes because guns are meant to be ergonomic, that finger slips inside that trigger guard. And that's no bueno. But since I have the laser there, I have to get my finger the heck out of the way so I can light up the target with the laser even before I've decided to press a trigger. Now, that's a small thing. But that's the one thing that I don't like about the, the, the grips. Uh, but other than that, I've found them to be outstanding. I've enjoyed shooting them a lot. And particularly if your eyes are not good, doesn't matter what your age is, if you have trouble with your eyes, they might be a great tool for you in that regard. Now, I've shot them a lot. I've found that it's helped me a lot. And I'm leaving them on the pistol, and I'm very grateful for them. If you'd like to investigate them further, I have put some links in the description for you, uh, and it'll take you to Optics Planet where you can take a look at them and see if they might be uh, something that you would like to add to your always gun or maybe a gun that you've got at home at night for home defense. Um, I'm really seriously considering adding them to all of my defensive pistols at this point because I've discovered how, how incredibly positive they are. The only warning I would give you is don't let the laser turn you get you to be lazy. Practice without it and make sure you can shoot with your fundamentals very, very well. And then the laser just makes it a little bit better and makes it more functional in the dark or in a panic and in a hurry. And so from that standpoint, it's very positive. Now, I'll also point out one other thing. There's a lot of folks I hear say, well, don't get a laser because the battery will die or this or that or nothing. Well, if we follow that theory, we're never going to buy a red dot sight or an illuminated scope or, a, you know what I mean? Look, technology, people like to resist technology. I get it. You don't want to be completely dependent upon the technology. That's why you want to practice your fundamentals and make sure they work. If the batteries go out, go back to what you've always done before. Go back to the fundamentals that you practice, and you're going to be fine. If the batteries don't go out, then you've got an extra tool to help you get your gun on target. How about that? That's pretty simple. But in my opinion, for me to say I'm not going to use this because the batteries might go out is a fool's errand in the extreme. It helps me shoot better. If the, if the, believe me, if, you're, if you know, somebody's trying to hurt me, uh, and, and the batteries go out, I'm going to go back to my fundamentals and I'm going to be just fine. And that's what you should do. That's why it's important not to become dependent upon the technology. Use it as it's, been, as it's meant to be used to help you achieve better results, but make sure you're always practicing without it so that you maintain those fundamentals and you can function in case it stops. Anyway, thank you very much for watching my channel. Please check out uh, Optics Planet and check out their grips. Uh, I've found them to be awesome. If you have any comments about them or if you have any experience about them, I'd love to know what your comments are. Please comment and, uh, and please subscribe. And we've got a lot of great videos that we've done before. We've got some more coming up. And if you subscribe, we'll let you know that it's coming. I thank you very much again for watching my channel. I'm very grateful that you do. It's because of you that the channel is growing and we're growing like a weed. And we're really looking forward to the channel continuing to grow and to be able to do more and better videos for you as, uh, as funds and capabilities become available. Also, I want to encourage you, if you like uh, gun videos and you like guns and you're not a member of the National Rifle Association, you should be. I'm going to try to make that as easy for you as possible by putting a link right here. It's also in the description. It'll take you to a little spot on our website where you can join the NRA and save some money. It'll save you money. I love deals, don't you? It'll save you some money and you can join the NRA for a year for less than the cost of a box of ammunition. Likewise, and I was just a long time on the phone with them today to kind of get some clarifications on things, and I'm even more impressed than I was before, and that is I want to recommend to you that if you're carrying a gun or you have a gun for home defense, that you sign up for Second Call Defense. That's the company I use to back me up if I ever have to defend myself, because I know if I ever have to use a gun in my defense, I'm likely to get arrested, I'm likely to get sued, and lose everything I have. And at my age, I certainly cannot afford to start over, and you probably can't either. So I want to urge you to check them out. They're the service I use because I've found that they're absolutely the best of all the ones that I've, uh, I've investigated. And after being on the phone with them for about an hour today with some questions I didn't have answers to, and uh, after getting their answers, I was even more impressed than I was before. So 
particular. Here's the link right here for Second Call Defense. If you can't see it, you'll find it in the description. It'll take you to a little spot on our website where you can learn more about them. And I do urge you to at least get some coverage of some sort. Uh, this is the one that I recommend because it's the one that we use. Again, thank you for watching my videos. Have a wonderful week. And, uh, and more importantly than anything else, you're important, so be safe.